epidemiological studies can be studied under observational and experimental studies. Both case control and cohort studies are types of observational studies, which we have already learnt about previously. In today's video, we are going to briefly understand the experimental study. An experimental study is conducted under the direct control of the investigator. It involves taking some action, intervention, as well as manipulation. This could be done by deliberate application or withdrawal of a suspected cause or by changing a variable in the causative chain in the experimental group while making no changes to the control group. For example, in our clinics, we must have performed tooth vitality tests. Endo ice is directly applied on the tooth in question and can be controlled by the clinician. The two groups are then observed and the outcomes of both the experiments in both the groups are compared. Let's first understand the aims of experimental studies. Firstly, it aims at providing proper scientific proof of the etiologic or risk factors which may then permit the modification or prevention of those diseases. This means that the causative factor of the disease is studied which can then be altered to stop the disease from occurring. Secondly, the experimental study aims at providing a method of measuring the effectiveness and efficiency of health services for the prevention, control and treatment of disease and the improvement of health in the community. This basically implies that the results from the study helps us to improve the effectiveness of health services provided in the community. These experimental studies can be conducted in animals as well as human beings. You might wonder, why conduct animal studies in the first place? Well, the animal studies firstly will experimentally reproduce human disease in animals to confirm if the etiologic hypothesis we came down to is correct or not. It also helps in studying the pathogenic phenomena as well as testing the efficacy of preventive or therapeutic measures undertaken to counter the diseases. One of the major advantages of animal studies is that these animals can be bred in laboratories and manipulated easily by the investigator. Second, you must have heard the clinical trial of vaccines on humans will take a long time, probably years. On the other hand, animals multiply rapidly and are hence useful in certain experiments which would take a long time if done on humans. Like every other study, this too has its limitations. The most important point to remember here is that despite several advantages of animal study, not all human diseases can be reproduced in animals. Also, the results and conclusions derived from your animal studies don't need to be true even in humans. It's also important to keep animal rights in mind before we conduct any animal study. For this purpose, human studies will always be needed to thoroughly investigate the etiology of a disease and therefore evaluate the preventive and therapeutic measures. Human studies can further be studied under two different types. First is the randomized control trials, which involves a process of random allocation. The second type is non-randomized trials. We will learn more about each of these two types in our upcoming videos. In conclusion, experimental studies are studies directly done by the investigator and involve the withdrawal or application of a suspected cause. Although animal studies have their advantages, human studies will always be needed for the accurate identification of the cause and then to plan out proper preventive and therapeutic measures. This was all for this video. Thank you. For more such videos, Download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.